nigga. Dickens, what if donkeys got anything to do with discipline? It's just that anyone would have to be a donkey to make trouble. Not quite the way I express it, but I take your point, and so I trust you all the young orphans. Yes, Mrs. Madstone. Did I say you speak? And now, it's time for breakfast. Uh, I thought you'd be pleased. Did you stop serving your culinary masterpiece? Do, do what? You shot the grill man! Girls, line up and enjoy it. Oh, Olivia! 
I don't blame Olivia. I wish I had a spirit. It's going to be an awful day. But it was worth it. Oh, Dickon, 
grown-ups I've met, but you're actually very nice. Oh, I've never watched that trick again. Not that I ever do. Bye, Dickon. Bye, Missy. No, Olivia. Nine, nine. 
The rhine and spine says mind me in the pine. <laughs> Try it again. The rhine and spine stays mind me in the plane. She'll never get it. She'll, She'll never, never get it. it. Annie, I'm curious about you. Where you're from? With your la di -da accent, you could pass for a proper lady. More than can be said of you, Eliza. I could be a lady, Doris, if I set my mind to it. Good grief. I could too. Then why did we hear you singing that song the other day? What song? You know. You know, that fancy song. Oh, that. Just something I heard somewhere. No flow. I envy Annie and the way she talks. What I want to be most in the world is a lady. <laughs> Would you care to take tea with me at the Ritz? 
The Ritz Evans, you're kidding me. No, I'm in earnest, I assure you. Blimey. All right, Mr. George Bernard Shaw, you're on. What did I tell you, girls? May I only be for half an hour, but... Eliza will never be a lady in a month of Sundays. The daughter of a dustman, no chance. You never know. Stranger things have happened. You're the only one who's been a lady, Annie. You got the posh accent. It must have been how I was brought up. How were you brought up, Annie? Yeah, you never let on about your past. We gossip all day long. Only thing that keeps us sane. But you, we, don't know anything about you. Neither do I. Come again? All I can remember is waking up in hospital up north. It must have been, oh, ten years ago now. I can remember everything since then. Coming to London, everything. But before that, everything's a blank. Poor thing. I've heard about that. It's called alopecia. <laughs> You mean amnesia. Our pictures when you go bald. It's just like my old man. Clinically bald and clinically bald. <laughs> Doris is right. And he's got antimassasar. Amnesia! Well, anyway, I've heard about a lad once. He got it on the head with a great he was loading. Lost his memory for five years. And so someone hit him over the head in a pub fight. And it all came back. Maybe. We should hit you over the head, Annie. Don't you know anything at all? Not even a little clue? All I've got is this. Oh, isn't it lovely? Look, Queenie. You are a bomb, baby. It looks good. You've grown up as pretty as your picture. Oh, um, it's not me. Who is it then? I don't know, but I wouldn't part with it for the world. Haven't you ever been married? No, I've had offers, but... It just didn't seem right. I don't know why. Maybe you were married, and your husband's wandering all over England looking for you. Stop it, Doris. You're making me cry. You always old was a romantic girl. I was romantic once. Then I married my old man. <laughs> well, you're a mystery, all right, Annie? But let's not dwell on it. Let's all chill. Have a cup of tea at Marcy Dosh.
example, I saw who did it. It was an old geezer and a young lad. She must be their accomplice. No, they gave me a penny to ask you the way. I didn't know they were going to rob you. Here, you can have their penny. A penny? There was ten pounds in that wallet. No, this is the case for the police. Now hold on a minute, Mr. George Bernard. I am mighty sure. What's your name, girl? Olivia, and how much money you got? Olivia, this penny, nothing else? No, I've just come to London. I was hoping to find some work. Don't you see? This little girl's offering you all she has in the world. If it were the other way around, would you offer her all of your riches? Because I know you're well off, aren't you? Young lady, I owe you an apology. I'm afraid it was a crusty old crustacean who jumped to the wrong conclusion. <coughs> Here's a pound for you, and one for you, Eliza. But your wallet, it was nicked. I saw it my own two eyes. A false one, my dear. I was warned by my friend Oscar Wilde about the danger of pickpockets. So there wasn't a tenor in it? No, just something I couldn't use, which they're welcome to. What was that? Two tickets to the opera. It's Wagner, I believe, and five hours long. <laughs> I bid you good evening. I've never been to the opera. Me neither, love. I've never been to anything. What, you never had any treats? Well, the nuns let me sing at psalms one Sunday, but I was better than the rest, so I was never allowed to do it again. I love singing. Me too. Hey, are you hungry? I could eat a horse. Don't tempt fate. There are many horses around these parts. Tell you what, love. I earn this pound easily. I'll buy us the best fish and chip supper money can buy. Then we'll go to the musical. Thank you, but I'll pay. I've got a pound too. No, dearie, your need is greater than mine. You got anywhere to kip tonight? Then you can get with me. There's no room to see a cat in my place, but if you don't mind squeezing in. That would be lovely, ma'am. Ma'am, blimey, aren't you polite girl? You call me Eliza and I'll call you Olivia. Olivia what, by the way? St. Francis. Olivia St. Francis. Never heard a name like that before. I was What's it? I was named after the convent where I was brought up. You an orphan then? Yes. Shame. Even more reason to see you treated properly. Tomorrow I'll set you up with Miss Dilber. She owns what she calls a poor school for orphans. She's a kindly old soul and she sails a bit close to the wind at times. But we all got to make a living, don't we? Anyway, she treats kids well enough, don't you worry about that. Come on then, let's go back to my place and get changed. I can maybe borrow some clothes for you from Mrs. Peabody downstairs. Then, we'll have the best fish and chips supper money can buy. After we have the grub, I'll take you to the musical. Olivia, you and I are going to take this town by storm tonight. Do you know what, Eliza? What? Thank you. 
I've ever seen. I've made me mind up. I want to be a singer. No, I want to be a ballet dancer. I'm serious, Fagin. I'm going to be a famous singer. But Dodger, I can only do this honestly. You can be my agent. Now you're talking.
Professor, what can I do for you? It isn't the day for your lesson. Olivia! Olivia is a particular friend of mine, Miss Dilba. I'd like you to take her in for your lesson, anything. Hello, Olivia, and welcome to Mrs. Dilba's Poor School for Children. I, of course, am Mrs. Dilba, and these are the children. Now, say hello to Olivia. Hello, hello Olivia. Olivia! I'm going to like it, you. Of course you will, otherwise I wouldn't have brought you. Now you will come and visit me, won't you? You know I will. And I'll see you with the other girls when I come to teach my weekly lesson. What do you teach? Elocution and English language. Like what is spoken by our idea queen. <laughs> Must be all. Go and leave it to make. Bye, Olivia. Bye, Eliza. Bye, Misty. Bye, Eliza. Bye, girls. Bye, Eliza. Well, children, let's make our latest arrival feel at home. Make friends with her and tell her what we do here. We get up about seven, those of us are asleep here. We have milk and bread with jam for breakfast. Then there are a couple of hours of lesson. Reading, writing, arithmetic, history, <coughs> geography, and allocution in English language. Like what is spoken by our own dear queen. <laughs> then there are useful skills, like housework. And cooking and baking. And knitting and sewing? Oh no, not sewing. I'm terrible at it. What are you good at, Olivia? Mm. Singing? Well, that's a new one. We don't learn that around here. Perhaps you could teach us. I'll be delighted. All right, children, back to your lessons. Well, I have a quick chat with Olivia. Well, what do you think? It's lovely. I'm going to love it. But how do you do it? It must cost a bit to run. I was coming to that. We're not a charitable institution, and you have to earn your own keep. There are lessons in the morning, and then the rest of the day you earn the dosh. We got a laundry which brings in a fair income. Some of the girls muck in. They do mending and make clothes and ladies' hats for sale. Others are in part-time service with the upper-class folk, or work in shops, and the rest go out collecting money for charity. <coughs> What charity? The charity that begins at home, dearie. Everyone hands over what they earn, be it a penny or a pound. Half goes to the upkeep of this place. I take my cup and the rest is for you. Are you happy with that? That sounds more than fair. What's this? A kind gentleman gave it to me. No, dearie. You keep it. You didn't earn it here. All right, children. You can come back. I've explained to Olivia how we run our ship here and she's more than happy to join the crew. Yay! But now, we'll have to see what work she's best suited for. She says she's good at singing. Is she now? <coughs> All right, Olivia, let's hear you. You mean sing? Now? Sing, 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 sing. All right, just a little tune, but I don't know all the words, so I'll sing half of the bits I don't know. West End. People are richer in the West End. 
And Ina, it's really tough getting money out of them. We'll just have to be tougher then. I think you're going to do well here, Olivia. Ah, oh, Davla. More laundry, I see. Davla is our ace washerwoman. There's nothing she can't get clean. Even Sweeney Todd's laundry. Who's Sweeney Todd? A barber. He lives in Fleet Street. Next to Mrs. Lovett's pie shop. There's always got signs on his laundry. Well, he can't be a very good barber if he keeps cutting his customers. Davla, that's an unusual name. Is it Irish? So my sure it is. Then that makes you the Irish washerwoman. Come on, everybody, let's do it. Do what? The Irish washerwoman did. <laughs>
terrible crash early this morning. What happened? She fell downstairs and bumped her head. Poor thing. She says she'll come along as soon as her headache wears off. I wish my headache would wear off, but he was snoring when I left him this morning. <laughs> I don't believe your old man's as bad as you can, Tim Queenie. I must admit, he's had his moments, about three of them in 30 years. <laughs> but he was a handsome fellow in his younger days. A redhead, no hair, just a redhead. <laughs> Goodness me, Queenie. I've heard that joke in the music all last week. Oh look, here comes Annie now. Yeah. How are you feeling, love? Uh, you had a little accident. Oh, I'm all right, just a little fuzzy. Well, you knocked out, did you? Yes, and the funny thing was, when I came round, it was as if I wasn't in my own home anymore. I was lying in a field somewhere. There was smoke, and lots of noise, and people shouting, and and a baby crying. You must have been dreaming. No, it was too real for a dream. You know what? You had a flashback. You know what? You bumped your head, and now it started bringing back memories. Maybe this cured your arthrosia. Amnesia. Who knows, dearie? And if you do stop getting more flashbacks, I know just the person to take you to. Don't take me to the madhouse. I'm not mad, honest. Well, there, there, love. No one suggests you are. Now, would I do such a thing to you, Annie? No. I mean, a detective who can find out who you really are. Well, would that cost a lot of money? Nah, he owes me a favour. Anything else come back to you? Just a little tune. Goes like this. If there's a star to wish upon, la 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 Never heard a song like that before? What is it? I don't know. It just kind of came into my head. I know there are some more words to them, to it, but I, I can't remember it. They'll maybe come back to you when you start getting over your espedistra. <coughs> Amnesia. <laughs> come on, Annie. I'll take you to him right now. It's a bit of a trek to Baker Street, so I'll get a cab. That will cost a fortune. Nah, I'll get Billy the Archer, the cabbie, to take us. He owes me a favour. Strikes me as no one owes her a favour. Three quarters, Queenie. Three quarters.
It's cost of the children in the location store, now. Yeah? And did my work deeds. All down to you, Olivia. Well, I'm very glad to hear it. You see, we're going to help you in the just now, and you're just the girl we need. You see, George Bernard Shaw is looking for someone for the show. It's called Travel by George, and they're looking for someone to play the door. Uh, I don't know. I love singing, but I'll have to ask Mrs. Dilber. Mrs. Dilber? Oh, you know that bad? Pardon me? That dear lady? We can swing it, Dad. Besides, there's money in it for you. I only take 10% for discovery, my dear. No, I take 10% for touching it, too. Well, Olivia, what do you say? Come on, girl. Become a star. There was smoke, and people shouting, and lots of noise, and the baby crying. 
Bits of metal flying everywhere. You never told me about the metal, Annie. No, it just came back to me now. Post-traumatic shock syndrome. Hey, what's your language, Doctor? There are ladies present. A clearly medical term, my dear. The good doctor was probably right in his diagnosis. And tell me, Annie, where was this hospital? In Stockport. Come, Watson. Where are we going? To the offices of the Times. There we shall look up the back pages of ten years ago and see if there are any clues in these esteemed pages. Annie, Eliza, stay as right as you like. I'm only too sure Mrs. Hudson will offer you some tea and cake. Mrs. Hudson's Victoria Sponge is all superb. Well, Annie, we've got the best detective in the world on your case. If he can't find out who you really are, no one can. Oh, I hope he can, Eliza. I hope he can. Come on, let's have some tea and Victoria sponges. I'll join you in a minute. It's fine. 
and one penny. Constable, what is the offence for which he was arrested? Both matters proceed in the southeasterly direction. How do you know it was southeasterly? The moon also requires. I observed the defendant under a lamp eating an apple. Eating an apple? That isn't crime, is it, Usher? Not that I know, my lord. Case is missed. If you please, your lordship, I haven't quite finished. Well, then you should have started earlier. However, and carry on, Constable. <laughs> Once he had finished consuming the apple, he dropped the coal on the ground. <gasps> you mean to say he lived in the streets of our fair city? Yes, my lord. This is definitely a new offence. Prisoner and Doc, how do you plead? In a groveling manner. <laughs> Before I sentence you for such a heinous crime, do you have anything to say in your defence? Not entirely. <laughs>
Young lady, you, you have both moved the court and myself a good deal. You have persuaded me to show your father mercy. I release him into your custody. Make sure he picks up his upper course in the future. Yes, sir. Court adjourned. Oh, right. Thank you, young lady. Here's the five pounds I promised you. Oh, and what's your name again?
for it. It seems everyone's happier when Olivia comes into life. Not necessarily richer, but happier. I'll drink to that. Let's all drink to that. And I'm paying.
agree that Olivia is certainly a star along with all her wonderful cast. What a fantastic show, everybody. We are so proud of you all for all your hard work. I think they deserve another round of applause. And of course, none of this is possible. We won't be doing our proper, proper thanks today. But none of this is possible without the hard work of all the teachers. Teachers, wherever you are, around the school, we are immensely proud of you as well. And I've heard it be said, if the encore is loud enough, there might be another song. Thank you so much, and we're going to take the moment now to celebrate every single cast member that made this show possible. Can we just give them another round of applause, please? Okay, so we're going to celebrate the PYP4 orphans. Could you please stand and give them a round of applause? Thank you. You guys can lead off. You ask me. Those schoolgirls. 
and Dave Blair, the Irish washerwoman. Okay, let's have our criminals stand and take your applause. And our outstanding opera dancers. Well done, chaps. All right, and let's have Scrooge and George Bernard Shaw. The constable, the judge, and the usher. Thank you. Mrs. Murdstone and Dickon. <laughs> Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson. <laughs> the town Italian tenor. Mrs. Hudson. The flower sellers. Annie. Well done. And to Eliza Doolittle. Mrs. Dilber. Artful Dodger and Fagan. And give your last big round of applause to Olivia. Thank you so much, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the show and you can get home safely. Thank you.